Welcome back. <laughs> so this is the tall lady with, uh, with the iceberg that you've all heard about. A few people asked me about what this topic would be about. Um, so we're going to get to hear Ann Miller. I mentioned earlier when Cliff had spoken about kind of uh, improving, you know, when you are sending information to people or presenting to folks, how you can improve the quality of that information um, so that it gets through the noise. Well, that is what Ann does. I learned last night that she was an English teacher uh, once upon a time, and that she has taken that knowledge to continue to help people kind of with, with language and how that relates to presentations. Uh, she's a recognized specialist on getting heard in today's noisy world. She's been doing that for 25 years uh, with companies, well, organizations like the UN and also the Deloitte and the Executive Forum. They've all relied on her for sales and presentation skills seminars, speaking and consulting. She's also the author of five books, the newest being, Tall Lady with the Iceberg, which she's about to hold up for you. And she's been on Bloomberg News, on NBC Today, in New York, CNN, and been featured in numerous online and offline publications, and also been a guest lecturer at programs such as Columbia Business School. Um, I present to you, Ann Miller. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. One of the hard things about sitting in the room and participating, and by the time you get to do your talk, you want to change it 15 different ways based on what other people have said. So you got off lucky this morning. <laughs> okay. All right, so I am the tall lady with the iceberg, and we'll explain that a little later on in our discussion. Basically, the reason we're all here today is because we all agree that people are drowning in information, and that causes a lot of problems, one of which is a total lack of attention or very short attention spans. I don't know how many of you have seen this factoid that people online actually have an attention span shorter than that of a goldfish. Eight seconds as opposed to nine seconds for the goldfish. Now, I don't know if that's actually correct, but directionally, it's very correct. And that, again, causes problems, one of which is people are under a tremendous amount of pressure, and they feel incredibly stressed out, and as a defense mechanism, they tend to tune out whatever it is you're saying. So while most of you are, uh, you know, are concerned about the receiving end of information overload, a lot of you are advocates for software for change in organizations, and it's really important that people actually open up their ears to listen to you. And in that spirit, what follows, I hope, will help you to make sure that you are sending in a way that gets really, really heard. The consequences of this terrible overload situation is that productivity is down. We all talked about that. And the other thing is that decisions don't get made. People just go into paralysis. And that thwarts progress. So on a very profound level, there are a lot of things wrong with all the information that is coming at us. And yet, and yet, <laughs> we still have to make things happen. We have to make the sales, we have to get the change, we've got to get the IT department to do something, we've got to get senior management to buy into things, we have to get the resources. You still have to make things happen. And where I'm coming from is that the way to do that, in a way that's ironic, is to fight overload information with a different kind of information, which is basically visual language. Visual language. Now what do I mean by that? I mean metaphors, I mean analogies, I mean things like stories and cartoons and props that can be used as metaphors or analogies. That is the single best way to make your point. Uh, there's nothing new with this. The Chinese said this many, many thousands of years ago. Some of you may know this proverb, tell me and I forget, show me and I remember, involve me and I understand. So if I wanted to teach you tennis, I could tell you, tennis is played on a 78-foot court, it's 37 feet wide, you can play with two players or four players, they use rackets, there's a ball, there are lines on the court, they've got to get the ball in the court. So I just told you how to play tennis. Get it? Get it? Sure, right. But if I showed you a video as I was telling you, you would have a much deeper understanding, you could get it at a deeper level. If I put you on the court with a racket in your hand, and explain it to you, you'd really get it. So I'm going to suggest to you that the best communicators, no matter what discipline you're in, always play at the show and involve level. And metaphors and analogies by their very nature, because they're visual, uh, show 
and because they are also very evocative, they're very involved. So that these things that we use every day in our common speech, or when we say it's hot as hell, it's cold as ice, I don't have the bandwidth to process that, that's a train wreck waiting to happen, that kind of metaphoric expression of our ideas is something we do every day. And what I'm saying is elevate it so that it becomes an intentional use, uh, intentional tool in your communications. It's metaphors and analogies, yeah, that's kind of nice, I get it, but it's really quite profound, because what you'll find is that the best way, the best way to get through to the brain, as opposed to the cognition discussions we were having, is with, with the visual. The visuals are the quickest route to the brain, they get attention, they're memorable, they're evocative, and it's instant understanding. So let me prove that to you with a very simple example. We all know that we are in, in the country in an economic crisis, right? There's too much spending, lots of debt, big deficit, no problem. I could give you 100 pages of data and information to demonstrate and prove that. And you could plow through it, or I could tell you that we are on a fiscal cliff. Fiscal cliff says volumes. <laughs> we are in deep trouble. <laughs> You can see the cliff, even though there's no visual there, the brain is such an imagined set. So fiscal cliff underscores all the information that I might tell you. And that's why visual communication is so important. <clears throat> the other thing about metaphors and analogies is they stand out. People remember them. Right? You loved, you loved this morning when uh, David showed you the eight different uh, email outlaws. You loved it, right? It totally stands out, it's different, it gets your attention. It's also memorable. When you leave this session today, not just mine, but everybody's session, what are you gonna remember? Cliff's needle, because it's visual. The ostrich, the guy, you know, head in the sand, right? Because it's visual. And you'll remember me, because I'm the tall lady with the iceberg. It's visual. <laughs> we'll come back to that later. And let me demonstrate this for you. I don't care how old you are. How many of you remember being in college? You're taking an exam. You don't know the answer, but you remember the answer was in the first paragraph on the right-hand page of the book, right? We remember visually. You walk down the street and you say, oh, I know you, I know you. What goes through your mind as you try to place this person? Is it words, is it numbers, or is it images? I'd be willing to bet that it's images, that even the most anal retentive analytic person in this room, <laughs> all right, it's always images. We remember visually. When you think about this meeting, you'll say, oh, I remember you, you were the one that sat on the left. You were the one in the green shirt. And that's what happens in my programs. There's a point in the program where there's a visual with an iceberg. And I'm making the point that people remember visually. And I say to them, Five years from now, we walk down the street, Robbie, you'll never remember my name. But you'll always remember me as the tall lady with the iceberg. See? And everybody laughs in recognition. It's true. That's how we remember. And you want to use that piece of information in how you communicate. The other thing about metaphors and analogies is that they're very evocative. I can describe a dog to you. I have this little pet dog. He's so cute. Blue brown eyes, floppy ears, black and white, brown. So I just told you, right? But look at the reaction you have when you actually see a picture. Can I all hear, oh, isn't he cute? Well, that's because you're seeing it. Pictures worth a thousand words. So images are very evocative, very evocative. Also, metaphors and analogies are the fastest way to instant understanding particularly when you're describing something new. So if I tell you I met this great guy this weekend, he was charming, he was exciting, he was interesting, he was attractive, just like George Jordan. You really like this guy, he's just like George Jordan. Do you have any idea who I'm talking about? No, you get that I'm excited about somebody, you get that he's a guy, but you know, I'm the one that's having a good time because I know he's just like George Jordan. But suppose I said to him he's just like Michael Jordan. Now, you don't have to be a basketball person to know to have some kind of associations with him, and they're pretty positive. So metaphors and analogies get to instant clarity right away, the language of common understanding. Mark Twain said the difference between a word and the right word is the difference between a lightning bug and lightning. So metaphors and analogies really create lightning. Let me give you 
uh, uh, examples from advertising, because advertisers use this all the time. You know, you've got the Prudential Rock of Gibraltar, you don't have the Prudential Pebble. Right? The Rock of Gibraltar is evocative, it carries meaning. There's a new glass app for cell phones from Corning. Strong and intelligent, so they call it Gorilla Glass. Smart. And then Jaguars are called Jaguars, they're not called Poodles. Because you wouldn't buy a Poodle, but you'd certainly buy a Jaguar because of the associations. Where's my friend from Accenture? Who said he worked at Accenture? Somebody over there. Remember when Tiger Woods was the poster boy for Accenture? Be a tiger, performance, achievement. And then Tiger strayed. And suddenly he became persona non grata. The ads were pulled right away. Within 48 hours you had a new set of ads from Accenture. Because they understood the power of a visual, of a metaphor, and what it means, what it means to a brand. So again, metaphors, analogies, very visual. They get people's attention. They are evocative, the language of common understanding. Let me give you some examples from real life. Okay, so nail a point. I'm going to give you seven quick examples, right? Metaphors and analogies are good to nail a point. So you have a lot of information to give. By all means, give the information, but then underscore it with the metaphor or analogy so they'll remember it. So Mike Geisner says the movie business has always been like the wild catting oil business. Everybody wants a gusher. That's very descriptive, it's very visual, very vivid, you get it. Uh, let me go down to the Iacocca. His use of metaphor, analogy, got him $1.2 billion from the government. Those of you who remember the crisis, I think it was the late 70s, when Chrysler was in trouble, wanted to get money from the government. Well, government and Congress were calling that a bailout. We're not giving you a bailout, we're not giving you a bailout. And so long it was a ba as long as it was a bailout, he wasn't getting his money. But once he said, oh, wait a minute, this is not a bailout. This is a safety net for a large portion of the American people. What congressman was not going to vote for a safety net? And he got his $1.2 billion. So the choice of worth and the choice of image had a tremendous payoff. Tremendous payoff. Okay. Use it in subject boxes. You talk about email. You want to get your emails open? Think about introducing a little visual language into your emails. The one that works for me a lot, if any of you are in marketing or sales, is when you haven't heard from someone for a while, just put it still on your radar screen. People always open that up. They just do. Okay? Uh, want to avoid a train wreck? Please review. You're going to open that up. So think about it being able to control who opens your emails by putting a little visualization to the subject box. A lot of you write papers. Who writes papers? Blogs? Articles? Make them visual. People want to know what it is. The visuals stand out. You know, Black Swans was a great name for a book about unexpected events that happen in the economy. Lou Gerson's book, Who Says Elephants Can't Dance, was a great title for his story, the story of his turnaround of IBM. Put them in the titles of your blogs, your articles, your reports. Liven it up with numbers. You all live in a world of numbers. You all do. 2% up, 3% down, 4% sideways, 20% return. means nothing. People can't see that. Just like you couldn't see George Jordan because you couldn't relate to it. But if I tell you that 300,000 people die every year for smoking, and that is the equivalent of two jumbo jets crashing every single day, Suddenly, 300,000 people takes on a life. But just to give you the abstract, 300,000 people die every year means nothing. I noticed in one of the research papers on the site, on the IORG site, there's an article from the Telegraph that says that you know, we get lots of information every day. And yeah, you read that, it goes in one eyeball out the other. But then the next line was that we all receive the equivalent of 174 newspapers worth of information every day. You go, wow, that's a lot. Because the number was put into a context. Um, a lot of you speak, okay, and some of the topics are fairly dry, important and, and, and meaningful, but dry. The best way to get open up any crowd, to wow a crowd, is to start out with a metaphor or analogy. Okay? Cliff did it with the needle in his uh, Biox story, did it with the story of CSI. Right? One of my favorites 
is uh, also if you're going to talk to a hostile crowd, best way to soften them up is to start out with a metaphor or an analogy. Because what it does is it relaxes people into listening to what you have to say. Uh, one of the best examples of this I've ever seen is Seth Godin, who's a marketing guru. He was talking to a group of marketers in New York. I was in the audience. And he basically wanted to tell them that what he was doing, what they were doing was wrong. So you can imagine if he got up and said, hey, I think everything you're doing is wrong, they would have shut down. Instead, he got up and he said, you know, I came down from Boston this morning, and I never talked to anybody in planes, but I'm sitting next to this woman with this enormous ring on her middle finger. Couldn't take my eyes off it. So I finally said to her, that's quite a ring. She said, yes, it's my wedding ring. And he said, I blurted out your wedding ring. It's on the wrong finger. And she said, yeah, I married the wrong guy. <laughs> See, the audience laughed, just as you did. And then he said, wait, I wonder if as marketers, we are not married to the wrong guy. I think we are. I think we have to re-examine what we're doing with our clients. And I have five ways to do that. Then they were ready to listen to him. And then when he got to the end, he said, so in summary, we don't want to be married to the wrong guy. He picked up on the thing. So something that's light and frivolous actually was a very powerful way to get people to listen and to consider changing their behavior. A lot of you come to networking events and then people say, what do you do? <laughs> Marty, what do you do? And we all go into these descriptions of what we do. And that's fine. But a lot of it sounds very me too. I help people increase their productivity. I help people increase their sales. Okay, I'm developing new systems. But again, it's like George Jordan, and you can't see that. But why not underscore it with something visual? There's a woman in New York who's a therapist, and after she, after she explains how she makes you healthy, she basically says, I help you become the DJ of your own mental iPod. Isn't that great? And you wouldn't forget that person. I met a woman who does microfinance work, and she explains all of that, and when you look confused, she says, think Citibank for the poor. And you get it. You just get it. Uh, I met an executive at the executive forum, and he basically takes companies and fixes them. And he explains how he does that, and then he wound up with, I get the ox out of the ditch. You will walk away remembering, well, that's the guy that gets the ox out of the ditch. And that's what you want to do with elevator speeches. A lot of you face resistance. We all face resistance to change. Okay? Uh, yes, you can handle it very logically, or you can reach for metaphor or analogy to change the way someone sees what you're talking about. Because metaphors and analogies are a way of seeing something. My best example of this, you may remember, when John Roberts was up for Supreme Court Justice, remember he had to go to before the Senate Judiciary Committee. And there was a lot of concern in the country because he was seen as being too conservative, that he was going to turn the country to the right. And he knew, he knew that it was come up in the hearings. And so when they asked him, what is your view of the uh, role of the Supreme Court Justice, he came up with this answer. I will remember that it's my job to call balls and strikes and not to pitch or bat. Judges are like umpires. They make sure everyone plays by the rules, but it is a limited role. Nobody ever went to a ball game to see the umpire. How brilliant. Not only was he talking to the Senate Judiciary, he knew that every newspaper and every television station in the country would be covering this. And what is the most favorite sport in the United States? Baseball. So he wanted an answer that the general Joe public could relate to. Now you know he didn't dream that up on the spot. He prepped for that. Totally brilliant. Power of metaphor and analogy needs to be recognized. And those were seven examples, but you can use metaphors and analogies for any situation. Anytime you open your mouth, no matter who you're talking to, lovers, children, spouses, clients, CEOs, board meetings, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You really want to be thinking about how can I express this with an analogy or a metaphor if you really want to lock in your thoughts. Now why is that? It's because of the way the brain works. You have a left brain and a right brain. You know that if you were going to sell something internally and there were two decision makers, you would call on both decision makers. Well, inside the brain is the left brain and the right brain. I mean, left side and the right side. The left side is the linear side, the analytical side, the logical side. 
the part that needs all those facts and information. The right side is the emotional side, the visual side. It's where metaphors and analogies resonate. So when you go to buy a car, your left brain says, I need a car, and there's so many miles per gallon, that can have a trunk that's big, because I have kids who like to ski, that has to be um, good in snow, and snow tires, that's the left brain side. And then your right brain side says, oh, I want it in red, with tan leather. <laughs> Okay. So if you are communicating to people, you always want to be telling and then showing. Telling and showing, tell and show, tell and show. So I love this morning when Dave, Dave you are, at the end when you were talking about uh, quick scan and how you related it back to us, Cliff Notes. Did you remember Cliff Notes? We all, we all, yeah, we do, we do. And you made your point very clearly, okay? very clearly. Uh, that was a right brain uh, Reference. Now, I don't think Dave was saying, I think I'll explain them to their left brain, and then I will use the cliff notes to talk to their right brain. <laughs> he just did it naturally. But the thing is, once you understand that that's how we process, then you've got to make sure that you have this in your presentations. So how do you do this? It's really simple. It's a four-step process. Think about what concept you want to explain. Think about what do I know about my audience. John Roberts knew America loves baseball. Dave knew that people know what cliff notes are. And then create it and then relate it back. And you can create it from a world of any world. Sports, fashion, depending on who you're talking to. Family life, the tech world. It has to be about what people know. I knew George Jordan, you didn't. But I knew that you would know Michael Jordan. So it had to be related to you. And it can come from many worlds. When we had the 2008 crisis, these are examples of, in the media of how people described it. Buffett called it a tsunami. Down at the bottom, the Bible. Fortune used the Bible, it was a plague. None of those is better than the others, but it's just not the same old, same old. Okay, you relate it back. Those of you who do presentations have visuals. If you just have left words, to left brain, show the apples. And if you can't stand just showing visuals, have the text with the apples, but have both. Just don't be like this guy. He was on the cutting edge. He pushed the envelope. He did the heavy lifting. He was a rainmaker. Then he ran out of metaphors. <laughs> you don't want to run out of metaphors. Okay? What you want to do in communicating is weave in your visual language, your metaphors and analogies, and that way you will really make the impact that you want. Thank you very much. Oh, and by the way, uh, I have copies of the book that I'm happy to give away. Uh, and I'll leave them on the table at the end. Okay? Well, what questions can I answer? You can ask two questions. Uh, beg your pardon? Two questions. Two questions. No questions. Have a good question. Yes, sir. For those of us that are wordsmiths. Who are what? Who are not wordsmiths. Yes. How, how do we train ourselves to... How do you train yourselves? I'll give you three words. It's just like. Anytime you're talking, just say, what is this like? It's just like. And if you push yourself, you'll come up with it. And if it's a really important meeting or presentation or report, then work with a friend and say, what is this like? They'll come up with it right away. The other thing you can do is look at the newspapers. If you read the financial pages, the sports pages, the op-ed pages, if you listen to the Sunday shows, talk shows, filled, filled with metaphors and analogies. The internet, in the cloud, trash bins, desktop, it's all metaphors. Thank you for that. It's just like. Yes, ma'am. There's also a book, something like, I never met a metaphor I didn't like. Yes. And that has some good techniques to help start training you. Right. And of course, in the book, it explains how to do that as well. As well. Good. So just remember one final thing that you can have great ideas, but without a metaphor or an analogy, it's like driving a beautiful Ferrari without gas. You will not get very far. Thank you very much.